a samurai army marches through the hills of the Iga province of Japan. The landscape is covered in dense trees and sheer rock faces, making it a perfect spot for an ambush by stealth ninjas. From the tree, the Iga warriors watch as the invading force approaches the kill zone. They are camouflaged to blend in with the forest. The invading samurai, led by the Nobukatsu of the Oda clan, march toward their demise. There's movement in the trees and rocks surrounding the valley. Then without warning, ninja warriors seem to appear out of thin air. They use guerrilla hit and run tactics, slashing the invading samurai with their swords as they glide across the forest path, only to disappear back into the trees. The invading Oda samurai are forced to retreat to the safety of their home province to regroup. The Tensho Iga War is the name given to two invasions on the province of Iga in 15 1979 and 1581 by the Oda clan. At the time, Japan was divided into many different territories controlled by shogun. The shogun used their militaries to keep command of their land and invade other territories to gain power and resources. Japan as a whole had an emperor who all shogun were supposed to report to, but really the emperor had very little power. He was just a figurehead. The shogun were really the ones in charge. During this time, we can think of the ruling elites of Japan or shogunate as similar to the kings of medieval Europe. In fact, the entire the entire shogunate system was akin to the feudal system of Europe. The shogun were like kings and the samurai were like knights and the peasants were still peasants. Shogun expanded or gained new territory using their samurai armies. For a long period of time, the Oda clan had their sights set on invading Iga province. Unfortunately for Oda Nobunaga, the ruler of the Oda clan, Iga was a natural fortress. The province was surrounded by mountains on all sides and could only be entered through narrow valleys. These valleys were prime spots for ambushes by the Iga samurais and ninjas. Oda Nobunaga had secured almost all land surrounding Iga province, but the land was still too protected by its natural topography and highly trained warriors for Nobunaga to conquer. So Oda Nobunaga set his sights on a different province. In 1567, he began his invasion of Ise province, just to the east of Iga province. The Oda clan was victorious, and as part of the peace agreement, the leader of the Kitabatake clan of Ise adopted Nobunaga's son, Nobukatsu, as his heir. This meant that although the Oda clan did not officially rule Ise, they were in control of the territory. To make the authority of the Oda clan in the region even more prominent, they began to assassinate the remaining members of the Kitabatake clan. With each death, the Oda clan became more powerful in the region. The assassinations continued until the Oda clan controlled the entire Ise region. Even though the peace agreement had said the Kitabatake clan could remain in power, now the Oda clan had the samurai numbers and resources to finally take Iga province, but it would not be easy. The young Nobukatsu, son to the Oda clan leader Oda Nobunaga, was ambitious and wanted to prove to his father that he would be a great shogun. He decided to expand the domain of Ise by invading Iga province. In 1578, Nobukatsu started preparations for his invasion. He sent samurai and builders to the outskirts of the Iga province. There he had secretly planned to construct a castle that would serve as a staging ground for his campaign. Unfortunately for the men that Nobukatsu sent to Iga province, the leaders were already alerted by Iga ninjas of the castle being built, their response, unrelenting ninja warfare. The samurai and ninjas of Iga decided to attack the castle before it could be constructed. On November 24, 1578, they attacked in broad daylight. The Iga warriors used stealth tactics to surround the workers. They caught the builders and Oda samurai off guard. From out of the forest ran hundreds of Iga warriors. Their swords tore through the meager defenses of the secret castle. The Oda clan and builders had to go into a full retreat or be slaughtered by the Iga attackers. They left everything behind and made their way back to Ise province as fast as as possible. After the Iga forces had dealt with the Oda builders and samurai, they brought torches to the half-built castle. To make sure the structure couldn't be completed, they burned it to the ground, sending a clear message that the Oda clan would have to do much better if they ever stood a chance of taking over the Iga province. Nobukatsu was surprised and embarrassed to hear of the total loss of his castle and the insolence of the Iga warriors. He sent samurai back to Iga province to make them pay, but the Iga warriors met them in one of the valleys of the region, using the landscape to to their advantage, they quickly defeated the Oda clan for the second time. This only infuriated Nobukatsu even more. He tried to amass a larger army to march into Iga for a third time, but his advisors persuaded him to wait. Unable to quench his thirst for revenge, Nobukatsu devised a three-pronged invasion to defeat the Iga warriors and claim their territory. The attack began on October 6, 1579. It would not end well for Nobukatsu or the Oda clan. 
The Iga leaders, through their network of spies, found out about Nobukatsu's plan to invade and made preparations. The Iga warriors set up ambushes along the paths that the Oda forces would have to take to enter Iga province. They knew just where to lie and wait. 8,000 of Nobukatsu's men entered Iga province through Nagano Pass. The Iga warriors used guerrilla tactics to throw the invading army off guard. They confused the Oda samurai by attacking from different areas at different times. It was impossible for the invading force to know where the next attack would come from. The Oda samurai began to take heavy losses. Nobukatsu was forced to retreat, leaving countless soldiers behind to their slaughter. The two other forces that Nobukatsu dispatched at the same time were much smaller, only consisting of around 1,500 men each. They met a similar fate to the main army. The Iga warriors used surprise attacks to sow chaos within their ranks. Then they slowly picked apart the confused and separated sections of the army. One of Nobukatsu's head generals lost his life trying to escape the warriors of Iga province. Thousands of Oda samurai were lost in only a few days. These massive defeats marked the end of Nobukatsu's campaign to Iga province. But that wasn't the worst news for Nobukatsu. He had carried out this campaign without consulting his father, Nobunaga, who was still head shogun of the Oda clan. Nobunaga was furious. Nobukatsu wanted to prove to his father that he could be a strong leader but failed in that mission and brought shame upon himself. Nobunaga threatened to disavow his son but ended up forgiving him, although he did take away much of his son's power. Nobunaga could not let Iga province grow any stronger. He had to show that the Oda clan was the mightiest force in the region. Nobunaga met with his advisors and war generals. He worked through the difficulties of taking Iga province and what was needed to do it successfully. Two years after his son's failed invasion, Nobunaga would launch his own. It would become known as the Second Tensho Iga War. On September 30, 1581, the invasion began. It was on a much larger scale than the previous attempts by his son. In fact, it made the earlier invasions look like child's play. At this point in time, Oda Nobunaga was one of the most powerful shoguns of all in Japan. He controlled most of the central area of the country. The most frustrating thing about Iga province to Nobunaga was that it was right in the middle of his territory. He controlled the land surrounding Iga province but had not yet been able to conquer Iga province itself. He needed to control this land in order to unify the entire region under his control. Oda Nobunaga assembled a huge army to defeat Iga province, an army so large that they would be able to force their way past any ambushes or traps the Iga warriors might lay for them. He decided to attack Iga province from all directions, causing the army to split their troops, thus minimizing the effectiveness of their military. Oda Nobunaga sent 12,000 samurai in from the northeast, 10,000 samurai in from the southeast, 7,000 samurai from the north, another 7,000 from the southwest, and a second force of 3,700 samurai entering right behind them, and 2,300 samurai from the northwest. The total force of Nobunaga's massive army was around 42,000 men. The Iga province army totaled around 10,000 and was spread throughout the region. They didn't stand a chance. But the Iga province warriors fought bravely. They continued to employ guerrilla and stealth tactics. They made small dents in the invading forces, but there were just too many Oda clan samurai. The Iga province warriors were forced to retreat to Hijiyama Castle in the north and Kashiwara Castle in the south, where they were besieged on by the Oda forces. Nobunaga sent wave after wave of samurai to attack the castles. He kept any supplies from getting to the Iga warriors, eventually causing them to surrender. The final forces at Kashiwara Castle surrendered on October 8, 1581, thus ending any further resistance to Oda Nobunaga and his clan. Iga province had fallen. In November, Nobunaga surveyed all the land of Iga province. Satisfied by the gains he and his army had made, he withdrew his troops and put his son Nobukatsu in control of the area. Even though his son had disgraced him, he forgave Nobukatsu and allowed him to rule the new Oda province that had once given the clan so much trouble. But how were the warriors of Iga province able to fight off so many invading samurai? How did they defeat much larger forces in the first Tensho Iga war? Part of it had to do with their knowledge of the land. There was something else at play, something that is pretty shocking. It's believed by many scholars that the ninja order started in Iga province. These elite fighters trained in espionage and guerrilla tactics would have made the warriors of Iga province especially deadly. This may have been why they were able to fight off the Oda clan for so long. After the war came to an end, Iga warriors were hired as auxiliary troops for other military forces. Their skills and abilities to infiltrate and secure secrets from enemies were legendary across Japan. Now check out our other video on the Japanese Yakuza, most dangerous and powerful gangs in the world, or watch China China vs Japan, who would win? Army military comparison.